VPN tunnels, which tunnel traffic between intermediate points on the network, violate the end-to-end -end argument. Sometimes TCP connections are split at an intermediate node along an end-to-end -end path, particularly when the last hop of the end-to-end -end path is wireless. This is sometimes done to improve the performance of the connection because loss on the last hop lossy wireless hop may not necessarily reflect congestion and we don't necessarily want TCP to react to losses that are not congestion related. Even spam in some sense is a violation of the end-to-end -end argument. For email, the end user is generally considered to be a human and by the end-to-end -end argument, the network should deliver all mail to the user. Does this mean that spam control mechanisms are in violation of end-to-end? -end? And if so, are these violations appropriate? What about peer-to-peer -peer systems where files are exchanged between two nodes on the internet but are assembled in chunks that are often traded among peers? What about caches and in-network aggregation? So when considering the end-to-end -end argument, it's worth asking whether or not the argument is still valid today and in what cases. There are questions about what's in versus out, certainly, and what functions belong in the dumb minimal network. For example, routing is currently in the dumb minimal network. Do we really believe that it belongs? What about multicast, mobility, quality of service? What about NATs? And it's worth considering whether the end-to-end -end argument is constraining innovation of the infrastructure by preventing us from putting some of the more interesting or helpful functions inside the network. In the third course, we'll talk about software-defined networking, which in some sense reverses many aspects of this end-to-end -end argument.